Wow. Good morning. How you doing? <laughs> Look, I'm making videos. I'm reading my books. I got my buddy reading my books. I watched Spartacus yesterday. I watched a couple movies. I got fruit. I got Obama tuna. That's a gift from Obama. This is my Obama apartment. Look at my Obama apartment. My roommate sits right here. I bought clothes. I, 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 look, I've been living like such a piece of crap for the past few years. I had to go get some clothes to lay on there and lay on them to go to sleep just so I can feel like I'm a part of something. I got a little dresser. The two bottom ones is mine. And guess what? My, my roommate is a veteran, so I can leave my money around. I can leave all my shit around. I ain't scared of nothing, because he's another vet. He can be trusted. And I got heat. I got heat. Oh, God. I got my Obama underwear on. I got more Obama underwear on. Obama! <laughs> But the, really the most important thing right now is I can actually wake up and I can get to some hot water and wash my hands, wash my face. Wow. Dude. America, America thanks the veterans are a burden. I'm not a burden to nobody. I was a great guy. I had a business. Everything going for myself and my life was destroyed because I saved Mrs. Fronny Green's life and advocated for her about the $20,858 that was taken from her by Algea Mitchell by taking an incapacitated old lady to the bank and having her sign some dead on papers. Wow, let's see here. Oh, we got lights, we got lights. I got lights. Wow, hey. <laughs> hey, man. Hot water. Wow, to be able to wash my hands in the morning, flush the toilet, flush the toilet, have toilet paper, ah, yep, that's because I'm about, I'm about to have these breakfast. Look at this, and it's in the dead of winter. Uh, wow. So, I guess everybody thinks I should be grateful now, right? You got to be freaking crazy. You just destroyed my freaking life, took everything from me. I'm out of six million bucks, at least, minimum. That's when I stopped counting. $100,000 for stuff taken out of my little penthouse apartment that I inherited because we were there prior to the Nigeria acquisition. It's called the multi-generational aspects of public housing that was eliminated by Mayor Bloomberg through him appointing affirmative action minority chairman, where it's got to bump up from the name commissioner. And when they get busted, diverting federal funds, suddenly you dump all the, all, all the crap on the minority chairman that, that ended up being the black guy and the two Puerto Ricans that were there before that, that did all of this on paper. And the black guy had to come and engineer how to now transfer it to nonprofits for the next 20, 25, 30 years of public housing after 75, 77 years uh, uh, since it started in 1932. And you guys did this to me, Mayor Bloomberg. Come on now, buddy! You did it. You did it like Robert Moses did his slum cleansing, his social cleansing, his scum cleansing. And you did it because you're the kind of guy that's in a town that there's a monopoly, there's a theocracy that runs this place, and you can't say nothing about them or else you become anti Semitic. You become, I'm a French green card guy. I couldn't give a flying crap about none of that. You know what my problem is? My money. I'm a real ugly guy. If I ain't got no money, I ain't got no power. And that's like Patrice. He ain't no good looking guy, but with that kind of power. 
You got all those stars over here. You're the head of the CIA. You can get you any kind of babe you want. That's my problem. I can't get no babe because I can't get no money. I ain't got no money. But I ain't got no money. This is America. Hey, no matter, no money, no honey. And guess what? It's been close to 10 years. Well, no, about 10 years since I know what it is. They have anybody give a crap about me because I ain't got no money. And that leads me to the conclusion that I got to do something because that's something I do believe will have to be for me to go to Canada. Because I'm French, I can go to Quebec, and I'll ever have to leave there till the day I die. Because I refuse to live in America and die here. I'm be buried next to an emancipated slave 500 years from now. They dig up and say, oh, look at a couple of slaves. I'm not one of those. I won't live like that. I won't live through the negative encouragement that I've got to go through. Being a black guy in America, that's a cultural norm for them. Uh, their skin color. This skin color, I swear, I never thought it was ugly. I never thought it would be shameful. I didn't think that being black in America could be such a freaking abomination. I swear, if I ever get out the United States of America, I'm going to throw the green card away, I'm going to throw the passport, I'm going to throw, yeah, it's a Haitian passport, I don't need it. I want Canadian citizenship. Because in effect, what you guys have did to me, I can't allow you all to do that ever again to me or my blood. That's why I won't breathe in this country. Love in America? Shit. <laughs> you ain't got no money. You can't buy none. And everybody that disagrees with you, oh, my woman loves me. I love my woman. You full of crap. That's a delusion. That's a delusion. That's a delusion. Then you got the Veterans Administration in Brooklyn feeding me medication that's illegal in New York State to give to anybody because the chemical exchange destroys you, destroys your brain. Okay? It gave me ED. All right? Then they want to give me Cialis. What in the hell does that do? Then you got to get another drug. And, come on now. The relationship of the Veterans Administration and these pharmaceutical companies is crazy. Okay? That's what's crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not bipolar. I get a diagnosis of 100% PTSD out the Brooklyn VA, and then suddenly, um, Volunteers of America, in order for, to contain the complaint against Charmaine McPherson, orchestrate a criminal matter, they have me locked up by the NYPD, and the NYPD comes on the scene and says, well, I don't see a problem here. This guy, <laughs> this guy didn't do that. And then, Ann Tannenbaum writes a letter and talk to the VA, and then you lock me up for a week, and then suddenly I'm getting a call from Dr. Julia Golia. I'm getting a call from uh, Elma, the social worker on the psych ward. What have you got? You, aren't you guys tired of abusing veterans? And it's really the Veterans Administration Hospitals is just a campus for putting, giving people jobs that normally wouldn't be able to get a job. That's what it is. They don't care about no veterans. They don't know what the veterans do. They don't give a shit. They actually think you're stupid and you're dumb for having been in the military. And when you come over there to, to the hospital for whatever care you might need or benefits that you're supposed to get, you're a burden to them. You've got a whole homeless section of a supposedly a doctor for an Baptiste. You got Nurse Regina. They're just full of crap. You got a veteran there. That's a nurse. She's an RN. That girl works. She's an African-American female. And that's about the only woman I respect in that place. At the Bronx VA. At the James J. Peters uh, 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 Medical Center. All I know is, Inspector General of the Veterans Administration, I'm making some one-hour videos for you. I'm about to make about maybe four of them which is about four, close to four and a half hours of video evidence of what my life's been like and me living on the beach. And you know what? Sandy and the Nor'easter, I believe it's divine retribution that ended up making you having to give me this.
a place for me to wash my ass in the morning, for me to be able to wash, for me to be able to go to the bathroom, for me to be able to actually have me something to eat in the morning, and a place for me to sleep with some freaking heat, and I'm a veteran. And being black, being a lowest piece of crap one can be in America, guess what? Somebody had to take care of me, didn't they? Because this one don't work in this welfare hotel, but they gave us this, but at least I can go get me some of that. Look at that. This is bomber clothes. This is that. This is what this is. This is bomber clothes. What you guys did to me here in the United States of America under the Bloomberg administration in New York City because I helped save Mrs. Funny Green's life. You destroyed my business. You destroyed me. Tried to have me killed, eliminated, or sent back to Haiti because Congressman Meeks and New York State Senator Huntley used the NYPD out the Queens District Attorney's Office to act privately under the color of law. But I'm busting their ass in court. And I'm recording all of it. I'm digitizing another one-hour show for the Attorney General. Well, I mean for the Inspector General of the VA. So guess what? Right now I'm about to have me some Bama tuna. Thank you very much for breakfast. And I'm going to put some a slice of cheese on it. Then I'm going to put some... Uh, what, what else do I want to put on there? Uh, potato chips. All right, I'm going to have tuna, potato chips, right. cheese... Rel the rel relish and, 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 and lettuce. That's my roommate. That's my roommate. Lord have mercy. And I'm going to have it with chocolate. That's right, right here. So thanks a lot for screwing over my life. And I'm so glad you're so busy right now trying to fix everybody else. Since I'm one in the crowd, you got to fix me too, don't you? Okay. Holy hell, need to rain down on you a little bit more often so you can pay attention to what matters. You have your nice day. November 18, 2012. On the 20th of this month, I'll be in New York State Supreme Court to see the att Assistant Attorney General show up because I just filed a motion to have him disqualified for the political lynching of New York State Senator Huntley. You mean to tell me you got a whole bunch of elected officials going to jail, getting busted, being prosecuted, and Eric T. Schneiderman don't do jack about going on TV and prosecuting them like did she did, like he did Shirley Huntley just before the primary to make sure she gets voted out of office. Eric T. Schneiderman, you got you a lynching on your belt as a trophy, don't you? Congratulations, buddy. And I'm going to prosecute you for it. And Charmaine McPherson, oh, you're not prosecuting anybody. The only prosecutions you know are criminal because I'm not the first guy we will be able to prove to the uh, New, uh, Veterans Administration Attorney General that you, Fauna Baptiste, and Regina at the Bronx VA been misusing the VA police and the NYPD against veterans in order to keep them in line and put them under control in your Watusi man dingo mix, uh, uh, super shemale African Americanism and putting a Willie Lynch chip in the nigger. You babe should lose your freaking jobs and your positions or at least be kicked out the homelessness program because you got no respect for veterans. If he's, if he's homeless, there's a reason. Me? I didn't get to be homeless because of drugs or because I I, I, I messed my life up. I was made that way by New York City. New York City under the Bloomberg administration, my friend. That's a quite different story. Bye-bye.